Iran. Hello, everyone. My name is Raha, and thank you. Uh, thank you for giving me uh, the opportunity to talk about uh, my research on 20th century and hybridity in Iranian, ar in Iranian architecture. Uh, actually, uh, I want to talk about one of the 20th century Iranian architecture, uh, architect, Hushang Huse Sehun. He is known as the man of enduring monuments due to designing a number of unique monumental tombs, which were inspired by both the treasure of tradition and the achievement of modernism. Before exploring hybridity and revivalism in Sehun's design, it is important to have background information on modernization in Iran. Modernization was an important period in Iranian history that began with the Russo-Persian War at the beginning of the 18th century and lasted until the end of the Pahlavi dynasty before the Islamic Revolution. These turbulent decades spurred a series of social and cultural transformation that resulted in the emergence of modern Iran. The most significant drive of modernization was initiated by Pahlavi, especially Reza Shah Pahlavi. Reza Shah desired to adopt aspects of Western civilization in a, such a, uh, in a such a fashion that Iran would become equal to the West. He introduced many social, economic, and political reforms during his reign, which caused many changes in Iranian buildings and cities. These changes and the creation of modern architecture were a challenge to traditional architecture viability in Iran. For example, the new, money, um, the, the new modern part of the cities had a relatively short building tradition. They were particularly receptive to the modern style. Major public and commercial buildings at that period adopted the fashionable classical style, neoclassicism, and bizarre classicism, such as, for example, Tehran Railway Station, Imperial Bank of Persia, and Medical Faculty of Tehran University. Uh, traditional buildings, which were constructed with materials such as mud, brick, and wood, gave way to modern buildings, which were constructed with modern materials, concrete, beams, and stone. Moreover, these modern buildings were made of plain brick wall, square window openings, and a sloped roof. And traditional elements, such as pointed arc windows, fiance decoration, tiles, walls, and dooms, were eliminated from modern buildings. Um, on the left side of the slide, you can see some example of traditional Iranian building with tiles and um, pointed arch windows. The influence of Westerners and the entry of this modernity into Iran cannot be deniable. Uh, Western architects had significant impacts on the Pahlavi architectural style. They tried to apply modern, constru modern construction techniques in 20th century Iranian architecture. Despite European architects trying to build modern buildings in Iran, some Iranian architects, sh uh, such as Hushang Sehun, attempt to revive the traditional Iranian architecture. Hushang Sehun blended principle of modern architecture with forms and materials taken from traditional Persian architecture. He rejected the formal duplication and imitation of Western architecture, and he admired learning from the principle of traditional Iranian architecture while drawing from the advantages offered by the technical achievements of the modern world. He referred to past Iranian monuments in a minimalist and modern language in his design for historical figure tombs like Avicenna, Khayyam, Nadir Shah, Kamal al Mulk, and Ferdowsi. These monumental tombs in contemporary Iran were mainly erected for the memorials of non religious, scientific, cultural, and national celebrities. As you can see in this slide, he designed Avicenna's mausoleum by inspiration from Gombade Gabu's tower 
as Avicenna and Gobus both live at the same time. The Gomba de Gobus on um, the left side is a monumental tomb in the north of the Iran and one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Gobus, one of the Ziyarid rulers, built a magnificent tomb for himself during his lifetime in 996. Many European scholars have admired this monument as it is similar to modern buildings and it bears minimalistic features. Um, the transparent tower of the Avacino Mausoleum, which were designed by Sehun, has been constructed with cement and pieces of hard stone. In Sehun's design for Avacino's tomb, not only the architectural language of prominent modern architects such as Frank Lloyd Wright, um, but also the legacy of traditional Iranian architecture can be observed. Moreover, he created a monument that manifests the mystical and philosophical characters of Avicenna. In the Khayyam tomb, Sehun was evidently intent on creating an original synthesis that draws upon and evokes the past without overt mimicry. He used modern carbandi in the mausoleum of Khayyam. Carbandi is a kind of masonry structure with a harmonic lattice geometry and consists of intersecting ribs with a stellar geometry. It is one of the most common patterns in Persian architecture throughout history. The peak of Sehun architectural creativity is seen in the use of elements of traditional Iranian architecture in a new and concise synthesis in Kamal al-Mulk tomb. Geometry has a prominent role in the creation of Kamal al-Mulk tomb, just like the tomb of Khayyam. The structure of this tomb contains six concave ivan with ten arches. This concrete shell is decorated with mosaic tiles. According to Sehun, the architecture of this building reminds of the architecture of Kamal al-Mulk hometown in Kashan. And Kashan um, is a city in the center of Iran and uh, is famous for its arch architecture. Although Sehun followed modern architectural method and bizarre school method in his design, he had a passion for traditional Iranian architecture. He fused Iranian classical heritage with new vocabulary and modern technology. And he made effort to portray the cultural identity of both Islamic and pre-Islamic periods in Iranian architecture. Unlike Western architects, he attempted to reconcile Iranian Islamic culture and modernity in his design to present a hybrid design of prominent modern architecture methods and traditional Iranian Islamic architecture. He sought to offer a middle way in architecture and neither neglected the history and culture of Iranian na nation nor rejected the West and its privilege. Uh, and he designed, re-imprinted not only the architectural language of prominent modern architects such as Frank Wright, but also the technical and formal legacy of traditional Iranian architecture. Thank you.